Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for a new military video. Today we will talk about utility helicopters and in particular the SB-1 Defiant, part of the future vertical lift program. Comparing it with the previous and most adopted utility helicopter in this moment, the UH-60 Black Hawk, both of them from United States of America. The Defiant project started in 2015 with the first flight in 2019. This helicopter is intended to replace the UH-60 Black Hawk as the main utility helicopter of the United States. It incorporates many features and today we will check all of them and compare the previous UH-60 with the newer SB-1. Let's start checking the crew. This one is the same for both. We have a crew of four with two pilots and two chiefs and gunners. Of course, the SB-1 is much newer. We have a prototype with the first flight in 2019 while for the Black Hawk we had the first flight in 1974. It's quite old but don't worry we had many upgrades during the time so now is much different from the previous version. But the overall design is still quite old and we have also more than 4000 of them built until now so this is why I told you before the UH-60 is one of the most adopted utility helicopter in the world. The manufacturer as you may notice is the same for both but the SB-1 we have an addition, the Boeing company. So this one is a joint project between the Sikorsky aircraft and Boeing. This is their second attempt to jointly produce an helicopter. The first one was the Comanche attack helicopter and you can find a dedicated video click in the right top corner if you are curious about this very futuristic attack reconnaissance helicopter. But now let's concentrate on the SB-1. The length of the SB-1 is 16 meters, while for the previous Black Hawk we have 19.8 meters. So this one is smaller. It's not properly so because the length is calculated with the rotor and if you check closely the images you can notice that the rotor of the SB-1 is more centered inside the fuselage compared to the Black Hawk. So even if the overall length is smaller the fuselage length is almost the same and how it's possible that the main rotor is placed in that position because this time we have a completely different system compared to any other kind of helicopter. Usually helicopters like the Black Hawk as you may notice have a main rotor and a tail rotor. If you don't know how helicopter works, I made a dedicated video in the right up corner that explain how physically they can fly, but here you have only to know that usually helicopters work like this. We have a main rotor and a tail rotor. But what about the SB-1? Well, the Defiance has a different system. We have a coaxial dual blade main rotor and this one alone is enough to make the helicopter fly. We don't need the tail rotor in this case. But as you may notice, we have something. And why? Because this one is a pusher propeller. This one is only needed to increase the maximum speed and make the helicopter fly faster after the takeoff. So just imagine a scenario where we have uh, the troops in a battlefield that needs to escape. You need to change your position from vertical to horizontal as fast as possible. And this pusher prop helps a lot. The tail rotor is one of the biggest weak points of an helicopter. It's an easy target, it can be easily damaged, and without it the helicopter cannot fly anymore. In this case the pusher prop is only an addition, the helicopter can still fly also without it, and thanks to the shorter length of the tail it's also more difficult to damage it. In addition to it the coaxial dual blade increases all the performance of the helicopter. Now another interesting thing to notice is the rotor diameter. In this case is quite similar to the previous Black Hawk, we have 15 meters against 16.4 meters so they are just a little bit shorter, but we have in this case 8 blades four for each rotor, while for the Black Hawk we have only four blades. Not only that, but the dual blades are counter-rotating and each one of the rotor silence the noise emitted from the other rotor. I know it may be strange to hear, as I said before, I made a dedicated video that you can find in the write-up corner that explains better how it works, but for now you have only to know that even if we have a dual blade rotor with eight blades, this one is more silent than a standard rotor. That of course is a quite good advantage to being not spotted by the enemy. More features we can find in the helicopter fuselage are for example the retractable landing gear. This one can be included inside the fuselage to reduce the friction with the air and increase the maximum performance. We have active rudders and elevators, also this one to increase the maneuverability of the helicopter. Fly-by-wire flight controls, an advanced drive system and a composite material fuselage. One last thing, the helicopter blades can be folded to reduce the space needed during 
doing the storage in uh, aircraft carriers or helicopter carriers. But of course, this feature is present also on the previous Black Hawk. You can find it, for example, on the Seahawk variant made for the Navy that can fold the wings and the tail. But now we can check also the performance of the two helicopters. Let's start with the newer SB-1. We have a maximum speed of 470 km per hour and a cruise speed of 460 km per hour. What about the previous Black Hawk? As you may notice, here the difference is huge. We have a maximum speed of 294 km per hour and a cruise speed of 282 km per hour. Of course, this big difference is achieved just thanks to the new propeller system, something that usually cannot be achieved by any standard helicopter. What about the other performance? We have a range of 450 km for the standard version, while we have 990 km for the previous Black Hawk. In this case, the Black Hawk seems to be a little better, but keep in mind that the Defiant is still a prototype and under development so this characteristic can be increased uh, also for the service sailing here the black oak seems to be the winner because we have a service sailing of 4600 meters for the sb1 and 5800 meters for the black oak for the power plant here we have a clear winner for the sb1 we have a power plant of two turbo shafts the t55 that you can find also on the ch47 chinook another dual blade helicopter even if the work system is quite different also that one is explained in my dedicated video and we have a total power of 7000 kilowatts while for the black hawk we have only 2820 kilowatts keep in mind that both the helicopters can fly even with only one engine so we have two engines to achieve the maximum speed and maximum performance but if one engine is damaged can still fly and land safely for the SB-1, we have a total weight of 5,000 kilograms, even if this data can be different in the future because we have different variants in the schedule, while for the Black Hawk, we have 9,000 kilograms. While for the passengers, we have up to 12 troops full equipped for the SB-1 and 11 for the UH-60 Black Hawk. So in this case, we have a little bit more internal space for the SB-1. So after checking this characteristic, we can have an overall view about the future of the utility helicopters. We can notice that the average number of troops will be almost the same, but what will change are the materials of the helicopter and the performance. The new utility helicopter will be much faster and will have better performance compared to the previous generation. But this is not the only option proposed for the future. In fact, we have also another competitor, the Bell V280 Valor. This one looks like the previous V22, the Osprey, but in a smaller scale. And if you are curious to know the features of this helicopter as well, let me know because I can make another video comparing the new Valor with the previous Osprey. So if you like this kind of video, let me know and maybe we can check them as well in the next one. As usual, I would like to remind you that in the right up corner or description of the video, you can find the playlist with more videos like this one, so you can check also the others. If you find this kind of video interesting, please leave a like, it's always appreciated, and let me know in the comments what you think about the video, and one last thing, maybe you don't know, but I designed these machines with LEGO, so if you like military and you like LEGO, maybe you can like also these kind of videos where I design military machines with LEGO. Actually, also Star Wars, Halo, and other things, but, 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 in this case, we are talking about military machines so if you like them check also the military lego playlist you may like them and also for today that's all see you again next week with a new video bye